Okay, so today we are going to start by taking a look at several problems from section 3.1. Uh, these will be problems 5 and say 11 and uh, say uh, 36. Problem 5 says uh, the vector from origin to the end point of a vector from minus 372 in the direction and with the length of the vector u given as 2 minus 3 4 okay let's uh, read the heading of this i got confused myself what is he talking about uh, express the given vector in terms of its coordinates uh, so here's a statement of the problem uh, problem 5 So we are after the vector from origin to end point of vector from minus 372 in the direction is he talking about so we have some point in space let's call, uh, call this point uh, a I just pick some point I'm not trying to draw this carefully just indicating some point a So uh, there is a vector that is drawn from here. So it says from A, and it's going somewhere. <coughs> that vector itself is in direction and the length of 2 minus 3, 4. That means this thing has this vector that I've drawn, this red vector, is the vector 2 minus 3, 4. So A represents this point. That vector I have drawn here is 2 minus 3, 4. What the book is after is the vector that goes from the origin to the end point of this. So what does that uh, vector, it's talking about this one. So, uh, how do we uh, get the answer? So this is, and uh, let me uh, write this thing with a different color. So, uh, this is vector u. This is the vector A, which is given in that style. What we are after is the vector, uh, let's call this W. W, so the vector that starts from the origin go, goes to the end point of a vector. That
that starts at this point with the coordinate minus 372 and goes according to u that is given by this uh, description. So how do I get w? Well, I can go straight to a and then continue from a along this blue line, blue vector u. So I get it as a plus u. So my challenge of this problem was to see what is it talking about. Uh, it's minus 372 plus 2 minus 3, 4. And so we get minus 1, 4, and 6, I guess. OK, so that was problem uh, 5. Next, uh, we are going to take a look at problem 11. Problem 11 says uh, we are given some vector v, which is 1 and 2. And it says let w be point 1v. Now sketch 2w, 1 half of w, minus 0.7w minus w then sketch span of w so let's do this part this part uh, before we go uh, further we have some vector 1 2 here is my vector say 1 So here's V, 1, 2. W is given to be a tenth of V. So just a lot smaller. So this is going to be our W. So you could say point 0.1 V, or you can take point 0.1 multiply by that. So it's going to be point 0.1 and point 0.2. sketch 2w well whatever that is I have to double it so this is going to be 2w sketch uh, let's sketch minus w first minus w minus w will be going the opposite direction minus 0.7 w is going to be even smaller so maybe I should have drawn my picture a little bit bigger than this so that it kind of uh, doesn't get lost but so minus 0.7 w because 70 percent of this in terms of length so that that is that all of these things are made out of scalar mul uh, multiples of w which itself was a scalar multiple of v. So what is the span of w anyway after all of this? t times v or t times w or, or one of these things. So uh, here is the span. So that is span of uh, w, which is same as the span of any one of these guys. So the line on which all of them are sitting, the set of points that are accessible by stretching any of these uh, vectors by a scalar multiple, the complete set is called the span of these guys. Pretty much the rest of it is like the same thing. So, uh, so part uh, this is part uh, A, part B, it says W is 5V. So now, uh, so that is going to be in part B, W became 5V. Uh, and then we go ahead and it says continue the instruction in A, which means make point one of this and uh, minus that and minus 0.7 of this just repeat the entire exercise at the end of it 
what would be the span of W? Same thing. So we are still staying on this. That is, the span of W is same as the span of previous W. Whatever you do, you are still stuck on that line. Nothing is di any different. Same thing with C. And this time says, uh, let W to be minus 0.4 V. Repeat the instruction in A. By now, it kind of looks a bit boring to be doing the same thing again. So uh, uh, C says so start with the, instead of that, start with minus 0.4 V. Again, the answer, the span is the same. Part D, it says, let W to be zero, zero vector, which is a zero scalar multiple of vector V. Now, what is the span of this one? Span of zero vector is just the zero vector itself, that is uh, just the origin. If you are stuck originally at the origin, whatever multiple of that you pick, it doesn't let you extend yourself outside. So uh, if all you got is the zero at the end, you're just stuck at the origin, you don't go anywhere else. So for any multiple of the original V, other than zero multiple, the span is the same line. If you pick the zero multiple, the span suddenly collapses to just that point, you can't go anywhere. Okay? Now, uh, exercises aren't really uh, helping that much so what you want to do is to try to do the span exercises that start to be three-dimensional vectors and a collection of them these are the problems uh, from say 20 to 22 so let me ask you to work on these bring up your questions next time. That's a little bit more substantial than what we were just doing. Right now, the problems we have done, uh, both of them have been word plays. Not much mathematical substance to any of them. It's just uh, they kind of feel like reading an IRS handbook or something. But uh, the ones from 20, 21, 22, they begin to be a bit more substantial. So you want to take a look at. Yeah, we are still on 3. Point, what these are 3.1. So let's pick another problem. We said we want to do 36. Uh, vector u is given uh, minus 1, minus 2, 3. And vector v is given 4, 1, 1. What we want to do is uh, find angle theta between u and v. We did an exercise like this last time, but uh, we're in a rush. Let's make sure we understood uh, what happened. This uh, whole thing r rests on uh, the following observation, that u dot v has two versions. One is u times length of V times cosine of the angle between the two of them and the second version of it is what? U1 times V1 plus U2 times V2 plus U3 times V3 we are multiplying these two like they were rows and columns of two matrix uh, and th therefore we add them up like this so what does that gonna give me? If you want to find the angle, then you are sort of going to say cosine of the angle is the dot product that you get from multiplying corresponding components and adding them up, divided by product of the length of these two. So that is the cosine. If you want the angle itself, you obtain it by arc cosine which is also called cosine inverse of that quantity u1 v1 u2 v2 u3 v3 
divided by length of u times length of v. Of course, if you add more components here, you will have more of these things to add up. If you have less components, well, you just shave those, that portion of the formula off. In our example, we had, uh, let me see if I can uh, squeeze the answer up here. So, uh, so cosine of theta, I'm going to dot these two. Help me out with that. So first I have minus 1 times 4. It's minus 2 times 1 plus 3 times 1. That is the dot of the two vectors. In the denominator, I'm supposed to have the length of each. How do I catch the length of u? What is that? Square root of its component squared. Notice all the negatives are going to go away. Same story for second component. So cosine of theta in the numerator I have minus 4, minus 2, which is minus 6 so far, plus 3 is minus 3. Denominator I have what? This is 1, 10, 14, is that right? And this one is 16, 1, 1 is, uh, is that right? It's 18. So you can uh, Well, this is cosine of the angle. Sometimes you might want to stop here, but typically you want to go one step further. You want to find the angle itself. You say angle theta is cosine inverse of this quantity, minus 3 over radical 14 times 18. Let's see. 14 times 18. We can write it as 2 times 7 times 2 times 9, so it's 4 times 63. So when you want to take square root of that, you can do a little bit of it yourself, even though here it doesn't help any, anything. So 2 times square root of, uh, well, I can do a little bit better than what I was doing, I guess. Uh, so. So this is 4 times 9 times 7. Uh, 2 times 3 makes 6. Square root of 7, it comes out. So it becomes cosine inverse of minus 1 over 2 radical 7. Okay, what next? Next, you need to use your calculator. You remember you, need, you can have a basic calculator. Uh, and uh, just be careful what mode it is in. If it is radian, then you say your answer is in radians. If it is in degrees, you say your answer is in degrees. You have to enter this number correctly. Make sure it is negative. What kind of answer are we going to get? What does this negative tell us? So we are going to use uh, your calculator. What kind of answer do you get when your cosine is negative? Theta will be in what quadrant? Second quadrant. So theta is between pi over 2 and pi. Uh, and uh, its cosine is 1 over 2 radical 7. So you get the answer in degrees or radians. So make sure you know how to use that button on the calculator to get, to get your answer. Uh, several uh, calculators are available on the website. If you want to use any of them, that would be fine. Okay, any other questions from this section? We have uh, some uh, major ideas to cover. Uh, uh, biggest thing is where does this formula come from? Okay, so th this was a, this is a major thing. 
this was our definition. We said u dot v is defined by length of u times length of v times cosine of theta. Okay, that's where our starting point. Okay, that's the definition. As soon as you attach another equal sign, that's a major claim. You have to prove your claim. Where are you bringing it from? Why is this thing equal to that? Well, most of this type of theorems in uh, basic math, they are all going to go back to the Pythagorean theorem. So let's go start it from there. So what does the Pythagorean theorem tell you? Pythagorean theorem tells you that if you have a right triangle, so if you have, this angle is 90 degrees, the connection between these numbers is what? a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Big question. What if the angle wasn't 90 degrees? What do you have then? So uh, let me say the what? Law of cosines here. We have law of cosines to handle uh, that problem for us. So let's take the following picture. Uh, let's say this is A, this is B, this is C. Or let me uh, just to write it in the way. Okay, let's say this is angle theta. So the, ang uh, the side C is not necessarily opposite a uh, right angle, but it's opposite some arbitrary angle. The question is, what's the connection between length of this side and the information you got here between A, B, and theta? What does that tell you about C? So. Two A, B, what? Cosine theta. Okay, how do we get that? That's magic, yes. Uh, uh, nice magic. Okay, well, uh, all such problems, they have to be reduced to Pythagorean theorem. So we are going to go back, quickly visit uh, stuff from uh, geometry uh, way back when. So I drop a perpendicular to create my right triangles. Okay, so that is dividing is we, we have this uh, hypot uh, this uh, excuse me this right triangle being created by this line let's call the length of it h and uh, as a result we have created this uh, two length here let's call one of them x the other one y now we need a tiny bit of uh, basic definitions in trigonometry as well so let's go here and practice this. If this angle is theta, and this is a right triangle, and we are, we are calling this H here, we're calling this X, and this guy is A. What's the definition of cosine of theta in this picture? Adjacent over hypotenuse, which tells me X is equal to, so adjacent is equal to what? Yeah, hypotenuse times cosine. Similar, similarly, sine of theta is h over a which tells me opposite is equal to a sine theta well that is exactly what I need here this x that I got uh, this x is a cosine theta this h is a sine theta so who's gonna be y if the whole whole thing was b this much of it is reserved for x. So this is going to be b minus x. Is that right? OK. Now we are going to focus on this right triangle. In that right triangle, apply the Pythagorean formula for me. What does that say? c squared is equal to h squared plus y squared. No, let's for a moment, uh, instead of y, just write what it was. It was b minus x. Uh, so hopefully you remember how to square stuff. b minus x squared, what is that? b squared minus what? 2bx plus 
x squared. Now, let's remember who everybody was. C squared is equal to h. Who was h? a sine theta. Is that right? h was a sine theta. So this is a sine theta squared plus b squared minus 2bx. Who was x? a cosine theta. x was a cosine theta. And again, who was x? a cosine theta. So c squared is equal to square this guy a squared sine squared of theta b squared minus two a b cosine theta square of that a squared cosine squared of theta. What are we going to do next? C squared. We say. Pay attention to these. What's a common factor between the two of them? A squared times sine squared plus cosine squared of theta plus b squared minus 2ab cosine theta and and then who is this? What is sine squared plus cosine squared of an angle? 1. Okay, so that's basic trig identity. That again is same thing as the Pythagorean theorem itself. The fact that this is 2 is exactly the same as this is 1. So c squared becomes a squared and then b squared minus 2ab cosine theta. So this is what you refer to as law of cosines in uh, geometry or trigonometry. Okay, So something like that shows up in your pre-calculus somewhere. So uh, this actually, this is a way of uh, measuring the angle theta. That's what they use when uh, you do land uh, surveying or something. Well, the machine usually does it for you, but uh, some years back, you didn't have the machines. Actually, somebody had to do this. If you have the length C, and you have the length A and B, how do you get the cosine of theta out of here? So you can say cosine of theta. Let me rearrange this. I say 2AB cosine. I brought this to this side. is equal to A squared plus B squared minus C squared. So if you want uh, angle, for example, you could calculate it out of such a formula you might have done this back in your trigonometry class. Well, what we want to say is this, this formula that we have here is really a reincarnation of that idea it's just in the language of linear algebra. It is really the same thing. Well, let's see how is it the same thing. Let me redraw this picture. So I have A, B, and C here. This was, so we had this guy was theta, this was A, this was B, and this was C, and this was connection between the two of them. I want to use vectors instead. Uh, I say, okay, suppose this is the vector U, and this one is the vector, uh, say, W. How can I make a, a vector for C? Like, uh, say I want to make this vector for C. Yep. What should I do to U and W to get this black vector? Subtract. In what manner? Is that U minus V or V minus, uh, U minus W or W minus? Yep. U minus W. Minus W, remember, minus W reverses W, reverse W, and then go along U. So this is U minus W. <coughs> so, well, what, was, what were we doing there? We were figuring out the length of U minus W. So let's do the same thing here. So U minus W, suppose I want to find the length of it. Uh, what's my motivation for that? Well, this formula had the length of that guy. That this is really C. If you want to square it, 
is the square of the length of u minus w. Now, if I have some vector a, what did we say about a dot a? It is same as what? Length of a squared. So u minus w squared is really u minus w times that is dotted with itself. Well, let's just go ahead and do the algebra. I have to multiply these two parentheses. I'm doing a dot product, but we have learned all the rules of multiplication here are essentially the same as rules of algebra we had. So first with first, but what kind of multiplication? Dot multiplication, is that right? U dot, uh, excuse me. Uh, U dot U. What else? Uh, read out the rest of them for me. So first with first, that I got u dot w. Yeah, this times that one is negative u dot w. Now this one times this one, negative w dot u, which is negative u dot w. And last with last, w dot w. <coughs> OK. What is u dot u? Remember, this was u. That is uh, u squared or a squared, is that right? u dot u is the length of the vector u squared, it's just a squared. How about w dot w? That is length of vector w squared, that is b squared. What is left in between? That is minus 2 u dot w. Okay, let's rewrite this thing. What do we have so far? I have c squared is equal to, let me write it, a squared first and b squared minus 2u dot w. What did we just discover? We discovered that c squared is a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine theta. What do we... get out of this, uh, the u dot w, yeah, this is equal to this, now that style of multiplication was based on the definition of dot product with the component notation, that is u1 times w1 plus u2 times w2 plus u3 times w3 that is same as on the right hand side a is the length of u b is the length of w And cosine of theta is just cosine of the angle between the two of them. So the formula that we are introducing is simply stating Pythagorean theorem. It just looks a lot more sophisticated than the Pythagorean theorem, but it's really the same thing. So to say that u dot v is equal to the length of u times length of v times cosine of the angle between the two of them, or sum of the product of the corresponding components is all the same thing. OK. so. Uh, now let's move on to a major application of uh, this concept. Uh, and that's the idea of projections. Okay, so what I expect you from uh, from you to know from what we just talked about is to figure out the, either dot product or the angle between two two vectors. Uh, uh, the proof that we just gave it's more like a icing on the cake. Idea of projection is the following that uh, in many applications you have two competing vectors uh, to consider. Like you have a vector w and uh, a vector v and a vector w. Sometimes 
you might be interested in dropping a plumb line or perpendicular from here to the other one. So you're dropping a plumb line from here to the green one and for whatever reason you might be interested in this. We call that P. P, uh, for example, projection of W on V. So P itself is a vector, is this black vector. And w is that blue one and V is that green one. <coughs> Sometimes you are interested in figuring out this P, sometimes you are interested in figuring out this red one, all sorts of application. This is called the normal component, this is called the tangential component and such. Okay, uh, we want to have a simple formula for P and then uh, to use it in the context of uh, projections. We need two simple ingredients. One is the following. If I have a certain vector, uh, let's call this vector A. Say I want to make another vector in the same direction as A, but of unit length. So I am calling it unit vector. So perhaps this A is a long vector, and I want to cut it to size, make it like a standard yardstick. What should I do to A to get this unit vector? So let's call this U to be unit vector for me. So suppose A has length 5. What should I do to A to cut it down to size? Divide it by whatever its length is. So length of a vector is given by this notation. Name of a vector in absolute value notation. Or as we said in the book, they use double vertical bar. I don't want to make it crowded here. So. To get the unit vector, you simply divide that vector by the length of it, and then you are all set. So that was simple enough. Second thing, uh, let's go ahead and, well, just for con convenience of creating our formulas, let's call this angle theta. Now, I have this right triangle here. Let's call this side A, call this side C, and this guy B as usual. What is A equal to in terms of uh, C and a trig function of this angle theta? We said it's C times let, let me refresh your memory. Cosine of an angle theta was adjacent over hypotenuse. So if I turn it around, the adjacent is equal to hypotenuse times cosine theta. <laughs> now, this A is the length of this vector W. So let's use the proper notation. Uh, excuse me. Uh, this A is the length of the vector P. C, hypotenuse, is the length of vector W. And then I have cosine of theta. I say, okay, I want to bring this uh, quantity V into my picture to create a formula that starts with W and V and ends up with my P. So what do I remember? I say I have ingredients of a formula I just saw. I take this thing, multiply and divide by the length of V. Let's see what's the use of making our life more complicated. It looks like I multiplied and divided by V. Now the numerator of this fraction is something familiar. Let's look at it. It's the length of V times the length of W times the cosine of an angle between V and W. What was another notation for the same thing? That dot product of these two vectors, V and W. Who is the denominator? Denominator is length of V. So 
one thing I got here already I got one formula which is length of the projection length of projected vector P is equal to this is just the length of it what is it V dot W over now how about the vector P itself this is the length of it okay let's go back to this definition we had here a unit vector is a vector itself divided by the length of it if I have the length of a vector how would I find the original vector itself say if I have if I want to get a vector a I can take the length of it and multiply by the unit vector in its own direction so here I come and say the vector P that you want to make this vector P take the length of it here's the length multiply by a unit vector in its direction well the unit vector in the direction of V is just V divided by the length of V everybody follow that so this is what I multiply with is the unit vector in direction of V which is most often just direction of P as well now let's rewrite V dot W now length of V times length of V you can write it as length of V squared and here's your vector V another way of writing same thing is V dot W length of V squared is same as vector V times vector V and then here we have another uh, occurrence of letter V so let's write what we got this is projection of W on V okay so remember uh, what we got here those of you who want to go further you have to learn how to reproduce the proof for yourself but right now uh, if you are here as a uh, looking for application of math what you need is to see how to apply this particular formula let's go ahead and take a simple example suppose uh, here I take a problem uh, problem 42 it says uh, u is given as 3 1 3 v is given as 4 1 minus 2 question is compute the projection of u on v so you have some u you have some v we want to know what's the projection of this on the other one and what we are after is the vector projection not just the length of the projection so what do we do you help me out to figure this out here is the formula if you are projecting on a certain vector then it is that vector that shows up four times in your formula okay so this is like where the shadow is being cast the shadow of u is falling on v and you want to figure out what that shadow is going to be the length as well as its direction 
it is this vector that shows up four times 4 1 minus 2 you have to dot it with well 4 1 minus 2 dotted with itself or find the length of it dotted with what in the numerator 3 1 3 and to get an extension or to get a direction to this vector you have the fourth round of appearance of the same vector okay from now on here is downhill what do we do help me out in the denominator remember when you multiply these things everybody gets squared don't get confused with the negatives so 4 times 4 is 16 and 1 is 17 and what else what's the total on the denominator 21 okay minus 2 times minus 2 don't get uh, subtract there it's going to be all positive here 21 numerator we have 12 plus 1 is 13 minus 6 so what is the total on the numerator 7 times So this one simplifies to one third of four one minus two, or if you wish, four third one third minus two third. So what is the meaning of this problem? Meaning is that after you cast the shadow on this and uh, say let's call it P or the book is calling it W or whatever, this projection has what relationship to V? is one third of is one third as long as we the, the, this is the magic factor that came out your projection of original vector on the second vector turns out to be a third of uh, that uh, I said you're projecting on okay we were still uh, short of one major idea in this section three two and that so-called Gram Schmidt process those are the problems uh, that are coming uh, toward the end of this book. It's a very important uh, idea in engineering, actually. Uh, uh, but you have to postpone it to next round. So for today, you want to figure out the problems from 31 through 42. This is from still section 32. No, 31. Okay, 31 through 42. Make sure you do at least one example from each, and then we are going to do Gram Schmidt process and hopefully get out of this uh, section. Okay, good luck and God bless.